Hi everyone, my name is Christina. I'm with Sweat Shop Hot Yoga Studio in Oconomowoc, Wisconsin. Today we're going to do a 30 minute classic hot 26 yoga class. So if you take this class in a studio, it would typically be 90 minutes long or our studio has adapted a 60 minute version. And typically the room is heated at 105 degrees and 40% humidity. So that heat really gets your heart rate up, gets you sweating, you'll leave the practice feeling nice and rejuvenated. If you're at home, feel free to grab a space heater like my unsightly one here to build some heat in the room. If not, that's okay too. Uh, the heat will help you lengthen some of your muscles and maybe stretch a little further in some of the poses. So if you're not using heat today, just make sure to really feel where your body is at and not push it too far. So one last thing with the Hot 26 class, we'll do 26 postures as the name alludes to, along with two breathing exercises. So with that, let's get started. I'll meet you on your mats. So you can come to the top of your mat in mountain pose. I'm actually going to face you guys for this. We're going to interlace all 10 fingers. And then place your hands underneath your chin with your thumbs touching your throat. When we breathe in, we're going to lift our elbows up. And as you exhale, you're pushing your chin and your face up to the sky with elbows nice and high. So we'll do that nine more times here. So nice big inhale. Elbows up. And exhale through your mouth. Pushing your chin back, shoulders low. Inhale through your nose, elbows are coming up. And exhale, face to the sky. Pressing your elbows together in front of yourself. Let's do another inhale. And exhale through the mouth. Inhale, elbows come nice and high. And exhale, elbows come to touch in front. Inhale, elbows up. And exhale through the mouth. You're pushing your chin back, bringing your face to the sky. Inhale, elbows up. This is helping us loosen up our backs, shoulders, and necks. Exhale, elbows come to touch. Inhale, elbows up. You can lengthen through your torso. And exhale, push the chin back. Just a few more. Inhale through the nose, elbows nice and tall. And exhale, push your chin back. Last one, nice big inhale. And exhale, push your chin back. All right, we can come to a mountain pose. And you'll bring your arms overhead, interlacing all 10 fingers and releasing your pointer or index fingers. And we'll just take a couple of bends side to side here. You can come to center. Inhale up. And we're going to exhale down to our right side. This is half moon. So make sure you're breathing here. It's more about the stretch you're feeling in your left side rather than how low you can get your body. You want to stand thin here like a blade of grass, so try not to hunch over, but stand nice and straight. And we can inhale to center. Just take an inhale and exhale here. And on your next inhale, you can lengthen up and exhale down to the side. Again, remembering to breathe here. Let's 
and we'll inhale, come up. We're gonna do a little bit of a back bend. So once again, we can inhale, stretch up nice and tall, and exhale, bring your arms back and your hips slightly forward. If you have any back issues here, maybe just try moving your arms rather than making a bend with your back. You can shift your gaze to the wall behind you and push your hips forward. And come up. And we're going to move into, it's called awkward pose. So it's similar to our chair. You'll bring your arms out long in front of you. And then we're just going to squat down into our chair position. And we'll hold here. Arms reaching far out in front of us. And sitting back into our chair. Try not to bring your knees in front of your toes here. Let's take one last breath here and come up. Keeping your arms straight out in front of you, we're gonna come to our tippy toes and we're gonna sit back into our chairs. You can move down nice and slow and you want the front of your ankles as flat as possible. So really trying to be on your tippy toes here. You might have some shaking in your legs. Try to breathe through that. And come up. And one more variation of this. You can step your feet a little closer together. We're gonna come to our tippy toes once more and then bring your knees together to touch. So you should have a nice seal between your thighs. And then we're gonna move down into our chair very slowly. Staying on our tippy toes. And we'll hold at the bottom here. Building some heat in our legs and our arms. Maybe the legs are shaking. Try to breathe through that. And come up. You can release your arms. Maybe shake it out a little bit. <laughs> and we'll come into Eagle Pose. Arms can come overhead and in one motion, we'll bring our right arm under our left. These are our eagle arms. We're gonna sit down into our chair, pushing your hips back and your right leg is going to cross over your left leg. Feel free to use your right foot as a kickstand, maybe putting out to the side here or wrap it all the way around your left leg. It helps to find a focal point here and using your breath and core to gain some balance. A few more breaths here. And we'll come up. Again, maybe shake it out a little bit. We're gonna do that same thing on our other side, so arms come overhead. And when we come down, we're crossing our left arm under the right. Sit down into our chair and our left leg is coming over the right leg. Again, maybe kickstand here or try going for the full wrap. Make sure your shoulders are nice and low here. And finding that point to focus on. Don't hold your breath, I know it's tempting. And just trying to find some stillness here. And we can come up. Our next pose is standing head to knee. There's a few different levels of this. So in our first variation, we can simply just lift our right leg up so our thighs parallel with the ground and knee bent at a 90 degree angle. You're welcome to stay here. If you wanna try taking it a step further, you can interlace all 10 fingers, 
round your spine down and hook your foot here. So grab a hold of your right leg. This is another spot where you can stay here. Or if you feel like you have your balance, the left leg is nice and firm. You can try kicking out your right leg. And then the final expression is to bring your forehead to your knee and bringing your elbows down. So find whatever level works here for you. We're inhaling and exhaling through these poses, challenging our bodies, but growing from that challenge. And you can release your leg. We'll repeat that on the other side. So you wanna to go to the same level that you did your first leg. So if you bring your leg up and you take it here, that's a perfect start. One step further, we can scoop up that left leg and keeping our right leg nice and engaged, we can kick our left leg forward and maybe hold here. Or if you're able to take it one step further, your forehead can come to your knee here. Again, breathing through the challenge here. And we can release. Next, we'll come into standing bow pose. So if this toes can be together, glue your right elbow to your right hip and you'll fan out your arm. Kick that right foot back to grab your foot from the inside and then glue your knees together. Left arm is gonna come up and then in one fluid motion, you're gonna kick up with your leg and hinge forward at your hips, bringing your right leg up. If you lose balance here, that's okay. Try to get right back into the pose. Your heart rates are probably jumping right now. And maybe try to lift that leg just one inch higher and release. And we'll do the same on our left side. So left elbow, left hip. Arm comes down to grab that right, or sorry, the left foot from the inside. Right hand overhead and kick your foot up. You might have one side that's a little bit looser than the other. That's okay. Just see how you can make this pose work for you. So you might be here. That's okay. If you want to try hinging forward a little bit as well. Find what works for you. Maybe find a point in front of you to focus on. Engage your core here to help stabilize yourself. And change. We can come to the back of our mat. We're gonna come into balancing stick. It's very similar to a warrior three. So we'll bring our arms overhead here. You can interlace your fingers. We'll take a big right step forward and then hinge at the hips, bringing our left foot off the ground. So we're coming into a capital T here and extending nice and long through our arms and our left leg, trying to engage your right leg to help stabilize yourself. Your torso is coming parallel to the ground. And our favorite part, we are remembering to breathe here and change. Keeping your arms overhead, we'll take a step forward with our left foot. Hinge at the hips, bringing the right leg off the ground and extending our arm and leg as far as possible in opposite directions. Again, if you lose your balance here, try just to get right back into it and change. So you can face the side of your mat. 
Once again, we're going to bring our arms overhead here. You can interlace your fingers. And we're going to take a big step out to the side. Arms can come parallel to the ground. We're just going to hinge at the hips to take a nice forward fold. Maybe pivot your feet out here at about a 45 degree angle. So we just raised our heart rates pretty good there. Take a few moments to breathe here and maybe calm it back down a little bit. You can bring your arms back out to your side and hinge at the hips, pulling yourself up. We're gonna pivot our feet so that our right foot is facing forward. For me, that's the back of my mat. And then we're going to bend the front knee at about a 90 degree angle. Might have to scooch that back foot back. And then we're going to bring our arms in opposite directions. You can glue your elbow to your knee and push those two against each other. That will help give you some stability here. And we can bring our arms up. We're actually gonna come right into a pyramid position. So all 10 toes are facing the same direction. You can bring your arms overhead. You'll tuck your chin and round forward. So we're gonna be stretching out our right hamstring here. And you actually do want your forehead to touch your knee here. If that means you have to bend your knee like it does for me, feel free to do that. And your hand should be touching the ground in front of your right toes here. And we'll come up, keeping our hands together. And we're gonna do a big 180 turn, so pivot your toes to face the opposite side of your mat. We'll do our fold here into pyramid. So rounding over your left leg now with your hands on the ground in front of your left toes and bringing your forehead to your knee, whether that means your forehead has a bent knee that you're connecting to, straight knee, whatever that looks like for you. Try to square off the hips here as well. So maybe push that left hip back a bit. And we'll come up with our hands touching. And we'll do triangle on this side. So our left leg is gonna bend at 90 degrees. Right leg nice and straight. And our elbow is coming to that left knee with both arms nice and long in either direction. You can gaze up towards your fingertips here, or maybe just gaze straight ahead. And change, bring your arms up, hands together overhead, and you can come down into a mountain pose. We're gonna do a tree here. So tree in classic hot yoga is a bit different. Um, feel free to still bring your foot to your calf or your thigh. The full expression here is to bring your foot to your opposite hip crease. And you can hold here. Maybe try bringing one hand to your heart. Maybe go for two hands here. Finding a focal point in front of you. And you're welcome to stay here or try moving into toe stand. So for toe stand, we'll hinge at our hips until our hands can touch the ground. Bend that left leg for our toe stand position. The goal here is to bring both hands to heart or maybe go for one hand. I find this position quite challenging, so I go for one hand. 
and toe standers can come up, hinging at the hips, and release that right leg. We'll repeat on the left side, so again, some modifications is foot to calf, foot to thigh, or maybe try bringing your foot to your right hip crease. See if you can do one hand to your heart. Maybe go for two hands if you're feeling wild today. And you're welcome to stay here or try hinging at the hips that will protect your knee as you move into toe stand. Until you can reach your hands to the ground. And maybe one hand or both hands come to your heart here. Toe standers can come up and release that left leg. And then we seal our standing practice with a quick namaste. And we're gonna take a quick little break, a savasana, so you can lie on your back here. Normally in a 90 minute class, it would be a two minute savasana, but we have a quick 30 minute class, so we get 10 seconds. So with that, we'll move into wind removing pose. We're gonna hug both of our knees into our chest and bring your head down to the mat. Just trying to compress your body. And as you inhale and on your exhales, maybe squeeze just a little bit tighter here. You can grab your opposite elbows or maybe hands or wrists and inhale and exhale, squeeze just a bit tighter and we'll release. Send your left leg in nice and long. Now just your right knee is going to come into your chest. We'll take a few breaths here as well. These wind removing poses are very helpful for digestion. So if you're ever having any issues, give these a try. And again, here on your exhales, maybe try pulling that leg just an inch deeper or 1% deeper. And we'll release our right leg. Right leg nice and long, left leg comes into our chest. Give it a nice big hug. Make sure that you're breathing here. In yoga, a lot of the benefit comes from connecting to your breath. And although this pose isn't incredibly challenging, it helps us learn to breathe when we are being challenged or stressed or whatever things we might be facing. Can release that left leg. We're gonna do a yogi sit up. So arms are gonna come nice and long above your head. And as we exhale, we'll rise up, trying to keep our biceps in line with our head and you can open mouth exhale. So inhale, stretch nice and long, and exhale, come up, touch your toes. And we'll move into baby cobra, so you can come to your tummies here. Hands are gonna be directly beneath our shoulders. Zip your legs up nice and tight. And as we inhale, we're just gonna peel our chest off of the mat. So just a little tiny back bend here. If this is bothering your back or if you have any back issues, feel free to just take an additional rest here. And we can release, bringing our left cheek to the mat. We'll move into locust pose. So in locust pose, both of our hands are gonna have our palms facing the mat. And they're actually going to come under our legs here. So we're kind of sitting or laying on the back of our elbows. And legs nice and long behind you. We'll lift our right leg up. And breathe here. You want that right leg to be nice and straight. So whether it's just an inch off the ground or three feet off the ground, just make sure that that leg is straight. Engaging your glutes here. 
and release. And we'll do the same on our left side. So left leg nice and straight, lifting it up to the sky. And release. Our last pose here is to bring both legs up to the sky. So it's helpful if you bring your lips and, and nose to the mat. And then you're going to zip your legs up, shift your weight forward into your shoulders, and then raise both legs. And try to breathe here. And release. We'll come into full locust or superman. So here we're still laying on our tummies. Arms can come out nice and wide, palms on the ground. And as we inhale, we'll lift our hands and legs off of the ground. And you can shift your gaze to the sky. And we can release your right cheek to the mat. We'll come into floor bow, similar to what we just did, but we're going to bend our knees, grab our feet from the outside. And when we inhale, again, we're going to lift up off of the mat, kind of balancing on your hip bones here. and release. And we'll come into similar to a hero position. You're going to sit down in between your legs and your knees should be touching here. This just sitting here might be enough or if you feel good with your knees you can place your hands on the bottoms of your feet and gently lower down to your elbows. Again, this might be enough here. Or if you'd like, you can try lowering all the way down to your shoulders and arms grabbing opposite elbows overhead. If your knees are peeling off of the mat here, you've gone too far, ease up a little bit. And make sure that you're breathing here. In the floor series, this should be calming down our heart rate. We'll come back up. And we're going to move into half tortoise. So you can sit on top of your calves here and bring our arms overhead. You don't need to interlace your fingers, but I like to do just my thumbs. Tuck your chin and round over until your fingers touch the mat in front of you. This is a bit of a resting pose, so take advantage of this position. And try to take some nice deep breaths. And we'll come back up. Arms can come down to our sides. We'll come into camel pose. So legs can be about hip width distance apart. We're standing on our knees here. You wanna place your hands on the back of your hips like you're putting them in some jean pockets. And you can gently push your hips forward, trying to glue your elbows together and opening up through the chest. So this is a great place to stay. Or you can try releasing your hands to the heels of your feet and pushing your hips forward. If you're here, try releasing your neck back, looking behind you, then pushing your hips forward. And we'll come back up, pushing on the hips to pull our upper bodies up. And we'll come into rabbit pose. So once again, we're sitting on the back of our calves. And here we're going to grab the heels of our feet with our thumbs uh, pointing outward and then rounding down. Our forehead is going to connect with our knees. The top of our head should be gently resting on the mat. So it looks like this. 
there shouldn't be much weight in your head, but you're really holding yourself with your arms here. So stretching out the back, the shoulders. And you can release. And then I just have a few poses left here. We'll do our head to knee stretching. So you can bring your legs into a figure four with your left foot on your right inner thigh. Bring your arms overhead, pivot to the right, and round down to catch that right foot. Your forehead is touching your knee here if you're able to. Maybe that means that your knee is bent a little bit. Trying to not let that left shoulder sink too much. And bring your hands overhead. With your hands staying overhead, switch out your legs. So now right foot is touching the inside of our left leg. We'll pivot just a bit to that left side and extend down to grab that left foot with your forehead to your knee here. Make sure to breathe through this nice hamstring stretch. Might be feeling it in your back and shoulders as well. And we can come up, arms down to your side. We'll just do a quick seated twist here. So left long, leg will stay nice and long. Our right foot is coming to the outside of that left leg. Right hand behind us as a little kickstand. Left arm comes up, comes to the outside of our right knee and grabs the left leg or, or knee. And then as you inhale, you can gently twist to your right side, trying to keep a nice tall spine. And we'll return to center, repeating on our other side. So right leg is nice and strong, left foot on the outside of our right leg, left hand behind us as a kickstand, Bring your right arm up on the outside of your left leg, grabbing your right leg. And as you inhale, gently twisting to the side. Maybe looking over your left shoulder. And release. We can come to a hero pose or maybe just a cross-legged position. And the last part of our practice today is our second breathing exercise. With this, it's all controlled by the gut or the belly. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some exhales from the belly. So it goes like this. And from doing that, your inhale becomes almost automatic. So you might not nail this 100% your very first time doing it, that's okay. Just follow along to the best of your ability. So we will start here. And we'll start moving a little bit faster. Savasana. Taking some deep breaths here. And just trying to melt into the floor beneath you. Palms can be up to the sky. 
And just thank yourself for showing up today. Show yourself some gratitude. Let's take a few deep breaths together here. So through your nose, a nice big inhale. We'll do an open mouth exhale. Let's take one last breath together through our nose, inhale. And exhale. You're welcome to stay in Savasana for however long that you would like. Just relaxing and showing yourself gratitude for your practice today. If you'd like, you can join me in slowly coming to a seated position. And that concludes our practice today. So thank you so much everyone for joining me. I hope you enjoyed trying something new and a little bit different today. If you didn't do it today with heat, I highly suggest if you have a personal space heater, giving that a try. Um, I, I'm not the most flexible person in the world. And for me personally, the heat really helps me to open up lengthen my muscles and get a really awesome feeling stretch. Uh, this practice is also really good for improving your balance. And a big way we do that is through engaging our core. So that means nice, tight, firm tummies from practicing this style of yoga on a regular basis. So once again, thank you so much for joining me. I can't wait to see you guys next time. Bye.